Joining me now is someone who knows New York's failures all too well and is determined to change them, Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. Congresswoman, thanks so much for taking time to be with us tonight. Great to be with you, Jen. You know, there's a few topics I'd like to cover with you. But first, you know, let's just jump right in and talk about these draconian mandates. I mean, it's almost like New York is taking cues from countries like Australia and Germany, where they have quarantine compounds. and They have lockdowns for the unvaccinated. And today, New York State, under the order of Governor Hochul, elective surgeries at over 30 hospitals are to be halted. I know you that you wrote a letter to the governor. Tell us about your concerns as this goes into effect. Well, when these initial mandates came into place, I had one of the first hospitals in the nation that had to cease, uh, close their maternity ward uh, and were stopped delivering babies because of that unconstitutional overreach. And this is at a time when we're already facing a labor shortage and a labor crisis at our hospitals and community health centers. Uh, these individuals put their lives on the line at the peak of the pandemic and now to penalize them, to punish them for their own individual health choice uh, regarding the vaccine. First of all, it's unconstitutional constitutional, both in New York, uh, but also across the country. It's federally unconstitutional. We are seeing now that uh, the governor is doubling down on these mandates. There are multiple hospitals in rural New York that have stopped elective procedures, elective surgeries. And what is that impact? First of all, it has poor health outcomes over time because people who need those screenings, who need those procedures done, they're going to be kicked down the road. And that's when health issues and health crises tend to creep up. Additionally, the hospitals throughout the past two years in particular have faced financial challenges. They need that revenue stream of those elective procedures in order to continue to make ends meet and to stay in the black and not in the red. This is something that is going to impact every taxpayer in our district. And fundamentally, it limits the access to care and it limits the quality of care. And shame on Governor Hochul for following Governor Cuomo's uh, really bad leadership when it came to how he handled the COVID pandemic. It was a catastrophe in New York. We had some of the worst metrics out of any state in the nation. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of Cuomo, you have also been very critical of Hochul recently for failing to stick to her promise that she was going to clean house after his departure. She did not keep that promise. So she was silent when asked whether the chancellor of the SUNY system, the State University of New York, uh, this is the public um, college uh, higher education system in New York State. Uh, the current chancellor is Jim Alatris, who was a Cuomo, a Cuomo clone, uh, a Cuomo crony, and he was basically implicated with the documents released by the New York Attorney General. And Kathy Hochul failed to say that he should resign. He has since submitted his resignation, but that's in response to voices like mine. Mind. Voices like students across New York State, not the governor, who didn't have the spine to stand up and make good on her promise. Yeah, and I also want to get your reaction to the news today that a New York Attorney General, Letitia James, she has suspended her run for governor. This was just a day after Politico came out with an article suggesting that she wasn't putting a whole lot of effort towards her campaign. And she's also been on a witch hunt with a criminal investigation into the Trump Organization. Now she's calling on Trump to, t to testify what do you think is happening behind the scenes there? You know, I was surprised to uh, see that announcement today. There still is going to be a competitive, crowded Democrat primary for go the governor's race next year, and it's going to be a race to the left. Uh, Tish James deciding not to run, obviously, uh, was a surprise, I think, to many New Yorkers and to many Democrat voters. But this is by no means uh, an easy reelection campaign for Kathy Hochul, not in the primary or the general election. Uh, so we ha there's going to be a lot of twists and turns before even the ballot is settled for how many far left candidates there will be in the Democrat primary. I think Republicans have a huge opportunity to win back, uh, finally, the governor's mansion in Albany to bring some common sense leadership to New York State. Yeah, New York State certainly needs it. And, you know, focusing on Washington and, and winning in 2022, there are whispers that in 2022, after Republicans uh, are well positioned to retake the House, that perhaps other Republicans might be interested in the speakership. Would you say that the gavel is safely in the grips of Leader McCarthy? I fully support Leader McCarthy. He has worked so hard over many years, not only as a conservative voice in Congress, but recruiting candidates and winning back the majority. We're working as a more unified team than ever before. You can see that the proof is in the polling, the fact that Joe Biden and House Democrats are underwater on basically every issue that's important to Americans, whether it's the border crisis, the inflation crisis, the supply chain crisis. So I fully support Leader McCarthy. I think he will be an excellent speaker uh, and he has my support and my vote. And as we look towards 2022 and beyond, just talk to me real quickly. We only got under a minute remaining. But, you know, what's the agenda for Republicans going past 2022? 
2022, we are going to focus on issues that actually matter. So let's take the border security crisis, which not only impacts border communities, but every congressional district in this country is getting impacted with both uh, the border crisis, but also the amount of illegal drugs crossing the border. We are going to secure our southern border. We are going to support our law enforcement, whether it's, that's the Border Patrol or whether that's the NYPD or local county sheriffs, local city police departments standing strongly with law enforcement and standing up for the rule of law. We're also going to make sure that we make it easy to create jobs, not more difficult like Joe Biden has. For example, getting rid of these unconstitutional mandates, taking away the incentive that the Democrats pushed that there was a greater incentive to, to stay out of work rather than going back to work. We should make sure that there's incentives to going to work, to creating jobs, uh, and also addressing our energy crisis. People are paying more and more at the gas pump every day. Joe Biden has had a war on independent American energy. We ought to, and Republicans will stand strong for domestic energy production and support American energy. Uh, and we want to go back to being a net exporter when it comes to selling our energy around the world, because that creates tens of thousands of jobs right here in the United States of America. Well, all items that no doubt a lot of Americans stand behind. Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, thanks for all the work that you do in Washington and up in the North Country. Great to have you with us tonight and hope you'll come back soon. Thank you so much, Jen.